A great technology, we have plugin system in our Scandi PWA ecosystem. Answer on my response from the GraphQL backend. How cool is that? Local package has been taken in order for this extension to be installed on my project. How magnificent is that? Here you go. So today I will tell you about the most recent advancements in our development toolkit and a little bit of technologies around it. Without further ado, let's start. Let's start. First of all, I'll tell you a little bit about the things that have been around for a while, but not many people actually know about them and use them. There are gonna be like two of these things, but it's important to know that they exist, right? First of all, we have plugins for functions. So basically you can assign a namespace to a function, to a simple function or to a narrow function, and then create a plugin around that function. Apparently not many people know about that, but yes, that's a thing that exists. Sometimes that's very convenient to have. The next thing is the new internationalization mechanism. Uh, the old one that we used to have before version 401, as far as I remember, uh, used to make you compile your project several times for several bundles. That increased the building times, exactly the time of times that you want languages to be supported. For example, if you had four locales, you needed to compile your project like four times, that would take 10 minutes, 20 minutes, depends on the size of your project. Now, we have absolutely a different situation. The localizations, the translation packages are supplied as chunks that can be switched in runtime, that can be fetched in runtime, and that operate absolutely autonomically. And that is great. That is great because it improves the building time and it enhances the experience of working with internationalization also this new approach supports having uh, internationalization in your, for example, extensions. If you write an extension, you can have an internationalization uh, packages like JSON, translation JSONs straight in your uh, extension and they will work. That's one more great thing. The next thing is pretty new. We didn't announce it yet. So here I am, template plugins. A great technology, we have had a plugin system in our Scandi PWA ecosystem for quite some time already, as you all, I hope, know, of, right, uh, of course, right? Uh, the template plugin system is quite a new thing. I'm going to get deeper into that right now. So why do we need it? To modify templates, of course. Basically, usually we have either PHP or HTML template for our project that is not accessible by plugin system because how can we modify it with plugin system, right? Uh, and there is no way to add something to that template without overriding the previous template of your parent theme, of, uh, uh, of parent theme of that theme or of something, right? The only API to interact with templates till now was overriding. Now we have a plugin system that allows uh, inserting some PHP directive as you see on the presented image. We can interact with template and PHP terms. We can add some extra nodes, PHP nodes, HTML nodes, basically anything that's compliant to the uh, DOM specification. Uh, the process looks as following. We have two APIs. The first one is DOM API, so basically, uh, you receive the DOM of your template in a function here, just as we do with our build configuration plugins. The process is very simple, to, similar to our build configuration plugins. We receive a DOM here, a parser that can parse things into DOM nodes, and a serializer that can serialize some DOM nodes into text contents. And we just, as simple as shown on the screen, can modify the template. Of course. All of this process happens on the server during the build time. The thought here is to have these modifications uh, in your template before any JS is even run on the client side, but, <clears throat> right? So the first one is the DOM API. The second one is the text API. By using the text API, we can interact with the markup of your template 
very similarly to how we did with DOM, but we receive plain text and we interact with it as with plain text. Mostly, this API is intended to use with technologies that are not compliant with the DOM specification. For example, Razor, Blade, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Any kind of technology like this. Uh, that's basically all I can tell about the template plugin system. Try it out yourself. Quite a powerful things in terms of template modification. The next thing I'm going to talk about is some partly covered by Alfred in his presentations. Thank you, Alfred. And this is, of course, our new development tools. What are they? They are CLI and a VS Code extension. These development tools allow you to create and overwrite resources in a blink of an eye. You can, of course, forget about writing any kind of template code manually because they will handle it for you completely, just as you saw in Alfred's demonstration. Don't copy stuff, don't forget anything, just use our development tools and you'll be good to go. Uh, let me show you some kind of minor, minor, minor demonstration of this this new technology okay so here i have a csa creates kind of VA project that's empty for now right so the first thing i'm going to demonstrate is of course our scandy pwa uh vs code extension for vs code uh, fans like we are at team scandy pwa right so of course i am able to create many 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 different things right one second, Scandi PWA, create a component, an extension. We can create modules like we have, we've had this opportunity before with the CLI tool, but now our VS Code tool can do that. We can extend, aka override components. We can extend queries. We can interact with store. Basically, it covers any kind, every kind of aspect uh, that, 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 that you would need in your development practice, a part of utils, but right, how can we systemize it? All of them are different. Basically, we can create, we can override. Creation looks very simple. We just uh, put the names like my component. We can select some kind of features. For example, this will generate map state to props, map dispatch to props, connect functions. Uh, this will generate the container itself. Uh, let's go with both of these guys, and the, the 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 component is created. As you see, it's absolutely uh, properly created, right? So you can see that we have this. Uh, we have ESLIN fixed here. We have our namespaces. We have our uh, our render function. We have our prop types for people who forget about that, like myself. Uh, we have everything that we'll need in like closest 30 to 40 minutes of developing this component. Uh, then I'm going to show you, of course, the override functionality. Scaly PWA extend a component, for example, right? So uh, I want to extend add to cart component. I want to uh, take the source one as exactly the same that the application would take. So I am using the fallback plugin for that. And now I can select anything I want to extend in the files that are uh, that are resources of the add to cart component. I, as far as I remember, it has a container, a component, and a style file. So now we talk about component, and we are presented with all of the exports that are available for being extended, basically all of the exports, right? Uh, Currently, we see only add to cart because it has only one exported member, and this is the class itself, add to cart component. Then, what should I do with styles? Keep extend override. Let's just keep them. And this is the interesting, interesting, interesting place in this component because it has many guys that I am able to extend. For example, let's take the component and then touch the props and see what happens, what gets generated, right? So here we see that the component has been created. It has been properly created. It extends the source one. It imports and extends the source one. And uh, we can overwrite anything. Just we're good to go. <coughs> good to go right now. And the next thing, of course, is the container. As you remember, of course, I have selected only map dispatch to props to extend. And we had an additional guy, map state to props there. So we see that map state to props and map dispatch to props are 
imported from the source component, then map state to props is exported in case something else in the application uses it. And map dispatch to props is extended and then exported. How great is that? Right, so that's it for now about the about the VS Code tool. Get acknowledged with that with that if you're interested in raising your productivity with scanning PWA technology. Let's talk a bit about our CLI tool. Basically, basically, CLI and VS Code tools are exactly the same, exactly the same functionality in different interfaces. So they don't have they use the same like base package for their functionality that's why you won't find any difference in how they work but personally myself i prefer the cli tool just because i uh, find it more flexible so basically i can scan it away, create components uh, blah 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 and it will be created just the same as with so with uh, with the vs code extension and we can override components just the same as we saw with the VS Code extension. I won't go into it now because Office has demonstrated that before. Let's proceed to the other interesting topics of uh, our presentation. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, VS Code on the right and VM on the left. Pick the one you like more, use it. Coming soon, what is under development right now? What uh, can you be interested in? The first thing is a thing that we don't have a name for yet. <laughs> Basically, for now, we call it Plug.js, but we are figuring out a, a better name for this for this package. Currently, it's kept private, and currently, 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 it's under development, but it's planned to be released anytime soon. Uh, what is it? Basically, it's getting completely during its ages of, 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 of open source has developed several technical solutions, for example, the pullback mechanism, the plugin system, the pull configuration system, and some others. And uh, this project is intended to offer all this functionality outside of the VM context, outside of the scanning the wave context. So uh, basically the future like the scanning the wave tool is planned to be uh, based exactly on this technology and this technology will be a separate solution. Uh, that will be, of course, supported by our team and developed further. For now, it's not available, but feel free to subscribe to the organization or to be on GitHub in order to know about when the release. It was planned this week, but we had a lot of things going on, so maybe next week, right? Uh, Rolls, do I have an, do I have some time? I should have. Okay. Uh, Everything is okay. You have all the time in the world. I'm just checking in because there was some voice uh, issues, but all good now. Okay, okay. So that's about Plug.js. Follow that. That will come to our world soon. And the next thing that we've been working on recently is the better GraphQL client. Uh, as you know, we in Scandi PWA don't really enjoy using third-party technologies. That's why we have so much stuff implemented ourselves. And this will be one of the tools that we use in the future versions of Scandi PWA. That's our new approach to GraphQL. Basically, it's the same approach to GraphQL, but a bit better just because it is uh, typed now. And now all the queries that you make as you see, we have the very similar, very, very similar things to what we used to have. We have our fields, we, we can nest fields, we have inline fragments, but uh, it's a bit different in terms of look at what happens on the screen. It tells me which fields I have available on my answer, on my response from the GraphQL, uh, GraphQL backend. How cool is that, right? For now, that's it, that's it. And this is all I wanted to tell you. Uh, if you are willing to ask any questions for me now, feel welcome to do so in our chat. Okay, okay, thank you, uh, Yegors, for the update, the sound uh, yet. Something went with audio for a little while. Something went wrong, but 
for the most part, all was great, all great news, all great updates. Okay, thank uh, you. So you will, everyone will be able to speak with Yegors during uh, the QA session. Uh, it will happen at five, and most likely it even will happen during the networking, so it will be split. So Yegors, uh, you can join it even earlier for to speak with the community. Uh, of Alfreds will be also there, and Antons and Liana will also be there. Anything else, Yegors? Uh, we are just waiting for our last speaker. So anything else you might want to update us on? Uh, no, as far as I remember, no. I have demonstrated all the really cool things that we've got going on <laughs> recently. I hope that the community will like them. Let's see how it goes. Alfred is asking you to create an extension demonstration. Okay, let's do that. CLI, CLI can do it, he Why says. No. Of course it let's can. Share the screen. Let's share the screen and show yes, it. Yes, yes, here. So here I am in my little Create Scanny PWA project and let's create an extension. So basically Scanny PWA uh, dash dash help will tell us every single command that we have available. Scanny PWA extension is the one we want to use for extension. Scanny PWA extension create uh me my little extension let's see how it works basically what happened now now it has been injected into my dependency block as you see it's local here so it has automatically been taken from this location when where it has just been created as you see the proper folder structure, SRC plugin, the package JSON file with the package name, and the extension, of course, has been already already enabled. No, it has not, but it will right now, I think, after this, this stuff. Yes, of course. So basically, right now, I have this extension created. I have it enabled in my application and I can start implementing it right now. About the Scandi PWA extension command, it's interesting that it is not only able to create extensions, but it's also able to install extensions. And now the installation command has been, uh, has been majorly improved in terms of now it is able to supply a path from where you're willing to install the extension. Of course, I don't have any demonstration for that now, unfortunately, but if I had an additional an additional package right here, I would be able, well, of course, let's, let's create one, right? So uh, let's just duplicate that and let's say that it's not me, it's, it's at you. And this one is going to be you. Right, I think that's it. I think that's all I need to do. And this command, scanny pwa extension install dash dash use uh, packages slash at u slash my little extension. Basically, what I expect now is for it to use. Oh no, I sh I should should should, as I remember, I should use this install. This. Yes, as you see, the installation process has started and this local local package has been taken in order for this extension to be installed on my project. How magnificent is that? Usually recently actors can be way before, people often mistake the installation process for V3 and V4. And this CLI utility is going to help you deal with that, just because it does that for you. That's one more interesting thing I <laughs> could have told at once, but thank you for giving me an additional opportunity. That's awesome.